Yeah. Yeah, old school. That's what I'm talking about. Listen, this ain't for everybody. Some of y'all need to hear this. I know you're in the trenches fighting, but check it out. I'm going to put it down like this so I can help you things understand. Everything you're going through is all part of the master plan. Or what? You thought because you got saved, everything was going to be peaches and cream? You better wake up, son. Don't nothing come to a sleep but a drink. Faith without work is dead. Read your Bible. You know what it says. He who don't work, don't eat. Blackers don't get fed. Huh, yeah. Jesus said, he who puts his hands to the plow looks back the same ain't fit. Some of y'all ain't been in the church just five minutes and you're about ready to quit. I ain't mad at you. I'm just hitting you with the real. <laughs> if you died for me and I was still tripping, now how you think that make you feel? Check this out. Deep game. This here's deep, huh? Some of y'all ain't sawing nothing but your study trying to reach huh? But after him who was able to possess your father by his glory. Struggles might be part of your testimony, but it ain't the end of the story. Now the point is this was prophesied way back in the day. Choir, sing your hook right here and see if the church can relate. you be the lead front man and that's when everybody starts choking on their coffee 
You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, um, for me, it was kind of hard because I, I'm about being a front man. Of course, I play bass guitar and about 11 other instruments, but I'm trying to be a front man, and there was a lot of bands that just wouldn't have no part of it. They, everybody had a different region, of course, you know. They're like, oh, you, you don't really got our sound, or, or you know, we don't really know if, if uh, uh, you live close enough to be able to rehearse as much as we'd like to, or... or one band actually told me, you're too flashy on stage. You attract too much attention. <laughs> and I thought, excuse me, ain't we a band? Are we supposed to get people's attention? He said, well, we don't want that much attention. So, you know, so, you know, it's one of those things, man. But that's why I'm a solo artist, man. They got to deal with that nonsense. Yeah. Hey, look, it's all right. You be part of the band. They just don't want you to be the band. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, yeah, you know. <laughs> But actually, I, I I know you turn that into some uh, uh, some premium gas in your gas tank stuff like that. All it does is is motivate you and uh, make you actually be all that you can be, really. Oh hell yeah, man! I mean, you know, look, I grew up listening to rock music, man. You know, way back in the day, you know, I was grew up in the country, man. We didn't have no forty different stations to hear. We had one station. And you had to go through America and, and, and the Moody Blues and, and you know, and those types of things to get to an Ohio player song. You know what I'm saying? Right. So you had, to, you had to wait it out. But, you know, when I started coming of age and there was folks out there like Prince and cats like that, man, that, that was doing rock. And I was like, man, you know, I wanted rock. They was doing rock funk. And when I thought about it, brother, I mean, I, every – Badass long version of every funk tune has a kick-ass rock guitar solo. If you go back in the history of R&B, from the Knee Deep, the extended version, Funkadelic, the extended version, you go to Slave, Slide, all those types of tracks, man, they got rock mm -hmm. guitar solos no matter where you look. You know, uh, Michael Jackson's Heartbreak Hotel has got a rock guitar solo. Well, if you go right well, down the list. Didn't he do? Didn't he have a rock and was that uh, Dirty Diana too? Oh, he sure did. You know, he, he had one in there. So I mean, there's rock guitars peppered all over any credible funk R&B dance song. And so for me, you know, the the foundation was laid out. You know, it was just a question of. You know, am I brave enough to jump into the rock lane? And, you know, look, I, and I jump into it, man. I, I do my songs and get out. But I, I'm not trying to do a bunch of rock and roll where people are screaming at each other and tearing up, throwing TVs out the window and that kind of stuff, man. You know, <laughs> I, I'm more into a, uh, into more of a rhythmic kind of melodic rock. Like my next single that we're releasing is called I'm Bringing Rock Back, which is kind of a like a rock groove. Uh, but it's definitely you know something that people can kind of digest, you know. Right. So Billy Ray, I understand uh, what I was reading some of your stuff that you're originally out of uh, Texas. Yeah, man. You know, I'm from uh, I'm from uh, Mount Pleasant, Texas, man, a little town about an hour outside of Dallas, and a family grew up there. <laughs> man, I grew up I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm only, only laughing, uh, with Billy. Billy, Billy I'm laughing because you're from Mount Pleasant, a little ways out of Dallas. I'm from Bonham, a little ways out of Dallas. Oh and, man! Uh, <laughs> and, and 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 I'm laughing because uh, my choice is for my parents to bring me to California. We had three: either you played music, played sports, or picked cotton. <laughs> So, of course, I ended up out here with the music, but you know what I mean? But I did try to pick cotton. But I'm just wondering, because down there in the little country that you represented, that you said little country town, I mean, like, is that where all you, you had the chance to really focus and really um, uh, get your hunger for the music? I guess that's where I'm going with this question. Well, no, man. What happened was I, I, we moved away from there when I was just knee high and just a little boy. Uh, most of my music thirst, and focus came after I got to California. See, my family, like you, moved out to Cali. And um, I had a brother, uh, he's still alive, you know, a brother, my brother Freddie, who was a horn player, um, started, he, we had an old house, and he was he was in a room behind my room. 
and he was always proxying his socks all the time, and it annoyed the hell out of me. Like, I couldn't take a nap, couldn't think, and I thought it was the dumbest damn thing I'd ever heard of. And then one day I was at school, and the band he was playing with played during lunchtime at my junior high school. And I got to tell you, man, every pissant girl I even thought I, like, ran to the stage and lost their mind. I was like, man, I got to learn this music thing, brother. There's, <laughs> there's something, there's come, obviously something I'm missing here. Listen, listen, how come was that so many of our motivations back then? <laughs> well, you know, I'm telling you, man, you have the stuff as men we do in life is to catch a woman. <laughs> and then when you got one, after you figured out how you can maybe keep her around, then it just becomes a question of, okay, I got to make sure I get my nickels right and get my bank right. That way I can live a life with this woman I worked hard to catch. But, yeah, I, you know, so much of what I did as an adolescent revolved around catching a girl, you know. It is so funny. I'm, I'm, I'm laughing, man. This is so funny. This is killing me because I stopped playing a saxophone to pick up a microphone because back then, you know, we had Maceo, you know, we had Sonny oh, Rollins, yeah. and, but, but mm-hmm. we didn't have no we didn't have no Kenny G. So the horn players wasn't really getting no love till later on. You That's know what true. I mean? So I, I put true. down the oh, horn yeah. to get a microphone. I got to grab the microphone for the exact same reason. <laughs> Oh, man, absolutely. Well, it's funny because I did that same progression. You know, I was like, my brother played the horn, so I learned how to play the sax. And then, well, first I started on the clarinet because I, I didn't want to be acting like I was copying my brother. So yeah, then I went from too. the clarinet to the trumpet, the trumpet to the sax. Then I picked up the bass guitar because the bass guitar, was well, they look like they're having a lot of fun, the guitar and the, the bass. All the ladies were staring at them. And I just worked my way to the front of the stage, and next thing you know, much like you, man, I go, give me that mic, man. I, this is where the action is. <laughs> like, yep, yep, yep. That so, same you know. little feeling, boy, walking across walking high school, walking across campus, boy, chest stuck out, boy, and all the little girls. Oh, yeah. That was a guy that was singing. Uh, man, oh, I hell think yeah. I was I think I was hooked from that point forward, you know. Plus, I was already <laughs> taking my music classes, already singing in choir. You know, already singing in church every weekend, so it was kind of like already mm-hmm. there anyway. Yep, yep, yep. No so doubt you, about it, man. Uh, yeah, Billy, you're a multi instrumentalist. So, um, first of all, name all the instruments you play, and then I'm gonna ask you which is your favorite, if there's such a thing. Well, I play the drums, drums, the sax. I play uh, the alto sax, tenor sax, soprano sax. I play a little flute. Trumpet, play a little violin, piano. Um, I play, uh, I play uh, cello. Um, I play the timbales. Um, I don't know if I left anything out, but that's about it. And in your in your production, we're gonna to get to your music here in a second to play some for our listeners. Um, you produce and played all the instruments on your music. I produce and play all the instruments, man. I've got a couple of songs that I brought some people in. There's a song I did called "Time Keeps On." I brought in a good friend of mine named Christopher Holmes. He did the guitar solo on that. Um, on the "Get the Funk," which is the hit out now, um, my brother did the sax solo on it. Um, I I did. The, there's some trumpets in there that I did. Um, to mix in with his sax. I mean, uh, the song, uh, so I mean, I, I do all the production myself, man. I used to, you know, it's funny, man, because when you're in a live band, it's like, I don't know, it's like marrying to a dysfunctional family. And you're constantly having to deal with everybody else's headaches just to accomplish anything. And so, when technology got to a point to where I could make music and not have to rely on, you know, the drummer having a a baby mama drama or uh, the other guitar player um, picked up a little drug habit and all these kind of things, right. man. I started making my own music, 
That way I could just worry about me. It's, it's a little frustrating because, you know, before the pandemic, whenever I had a gig you know, I've got to go do, uh, especially when it was it's rock, it's a rock venue, well, they're wondering if I got a band. I'm like, no, I ain't got no band, man. It's just me. So to them, it feels like some kind of high tech, like a guy's going to show up with a keyboard and be a one-man band, you know. And they want, like, a live band. So it, it can be kind of a, a stressful kind of thing. I mean, they were talking about doing some gigs over in South Africa because the Get the Funk song is so popular. I got some calls from some promoters and whatnot. Um, but, you know, with this pandemic, but even if the pandemic wasn't happening, for me, I'm not, I'm not, you know, it'll take a minute before I'm motivated to put together a live band to get over there and do this thing, you know. But, yeah. You almost have to be a psychiatrist dealing with all the uh, egos, personalities. Oh, pretty much, the, yeah. Uh, the baby yeah. drama, drama, and everything oh, that's man. along with that, and 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 all like the, the egos is what used to kill me. You know what I mean? It's just mm-hmm. all of that, you know. And I definitely applaud the groups that are still out there today. That's been out there, been there together for twenty, thirty years. You know, it's, you know. I guess. Oh, it's amazing. I saw. Uh, that's I was talking function at the county fair a couple of years ago, and uh, uh-huh. same guys, Michael Cooper, all those guys, and I was just in awe. I thought, like, man, the fact that y'all can stick around each other for this long, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? That I mean, it true. sounded good and all that, but you know, just the idea that you know, and I, and, you know, I'm sure they all you know, got they like each other and all that. But, you know, money can be a motivator, brother, you know. <laughs> money, you know yes, like, yes. You know, Definitely that. Uh, you know, so that's, you know. So so how do you feel about this technology in this business? Um, do you think it's been helpful or do you think it's been a negative thing? Because I know by you being able to produce and, and play your own stuff, you don't need as many people. Uh, as you once did, have to have each individual person come in and play their parts. So do you feel like it's been helpful, or do you not? Well, I, I hate to be in the middle of the road, but it's been, uh, oh, my God. I think it's not I think it's not been helpful more than it's been helpful. And I'll explain to you what I mean, man. Um, the helpful part is it allows folks like me to put music together. It's great, you know. And I don't have to get four of my friends and deal with the stress that we talked about. It's not helpful in many other ways. For example, man, um, it's not helpful, like, uh, this auto-tune has got everybody thinking they could sing, okay? And it's got rappers thinking they can sing. It's got people who aren't even rappers thinking they can sing. And so... In that regard, that's one way. The other way, it's, it's not helpful. You know, it used to be if you were a DJ, all you did was play music. That was it. Now, you got DJs getting nominated for perform for best performance for a Grammy. And, and you know, by my book is if you're not singing or if your voice isn't on a song, you didn't perform. You may have produced it <laughs> but you did not perform and right. I think this technology has got people into that space you know where you don't really have to have much talent um, to get anything and the other way I think it's hurt is it's got it, it's, it's, it's too many I mean it's just an onslaught of everybody's got a song. And it's too many people out there with too much music. And because of that, um, you know, the people who have music that's really good don't get heard. The bad ones drown out the good ones. Okay? So, I mean, those are a couple of ways I think that it's hurt more than it's helped. Now, the progression of laws is hurt, too, in radio, you know, they made it so clear channel, a lot of these big cats can buy up all the the little stations. It's made it harder because now if you're somebody with a great song, you can't go to your local mom, pa radio station and go, hey, I got a great song. Can you listen to it? 
And you can't have them love it and say, this is a great song, and call their buddy in the next town over and go, hey, man, I got this song you got to hear. Then they call a buddy in their next town over, and, you know, a, a couple of months of that, next thing you know, you got a hit. Like, that doesn't happen now. Because when you go to the local radio station with your song, the radio station says, oh, I'm sorry, we're a satellite, and we're part of the XYZ network. And so if you want something to get airplay, you got to contact our corporate office in Atlanta. Well, that corporate office in Atlanta is beholden to major labels who've got their own kind of, you know, itinerary of artists they're trying to break to the public. So if you're a little guy, you almost got no way to get out there. Now, you can go through TikTok memes and YouTube and those types of things, but that's even getting harder because everybody, of course, is loading their songs on there. You know what I mean? So unless you're going to drop, you know, a couple of grand in the Internet promotions or something, you ain't going nowhere. So if you're a guy that's broke that's got a great song, well, it sucks to be you. And that's kind of how it is right now, you know. And I'm one of the fortunate few. I got a great rep- representation in MTS management and, and some different people on my side, man. But I've been that nobody before. And it sucks, brother. It ain't fun. Well, no, no doubt, no doubt. Because definitely, you know, I look at it on the industry side where, you know, uh, you know, there was a time where uh, the A&R people actually went out to hear a band or hear an artist play. Oh, absolutely. You know, not, Nowadays, it's all about going online and looking at, um, you know, their views, their likes, their hits, so on and so forth. And then if you stand it up that way, then they'll give you an opportunity. But what about all the great artists and the great singers and musicians that don't get that opportunity because they don't have, you know, the, that team in place? Absolutely. and that's And that's the thing, man. I mean... You get like, uh, I remember, you know, much like you, when A&R helped you out. That Now, I think a situation now where, you know, because I remember I was a kid and you went to the record store. And, you know, if you did a record, you know, and you went to a record store, you, know, you would go, I, I never did this, I was too young, my brother used to have this song, on sale at the local record store. And I remember sitting there thinking, man, you guys are going to be famous, you know. And I thought to myself, man, this is kind of cool. They had like a little 45 record that they were, they were, were able to get the radio record store to carry. Well, the idea back when I was growing up was if you can get your stuff in record stores all over, you made it. That was it. You, you, man, you could start figuring out what mansion you're going to move into or whatever. <laughs> Well, nowadays, you can do that and still not get anywhere. I mean, you can have a song out, and it could be available everywhere anybody want to look to find it. Now the big deal is, can you get your song to mainstream radio? You know, terrestrial radio. I get a lot of phone calls from people all the time. They go, man, uh, we, we want to be promoters. Hey, we want to get your song on the radio. And I got to stop them, and I go, well, what radio are you talking about? Internet radio? What kind of radio? And they'll say, well, um, I got an internet radio station, and I got uh, 62 listeners. And and I want to play your song, and I tell them, well, play it. That's 62 more than I had before you called. But the fact of the matter is, the only stations that really matter are the ones that report to Billboard magazine. You know? Right. Because those are the stations that are, because you want to, my thing is, you want to be able to hear your music. You want people to hear your music when they're sitting up at their job typing or in rush hour traffic getting home. You know, and it's got to be out there in that way, and that's the only way you're going to get the exposure to set up legitimate tours and whatnot. I guess my point is, if you're an artist out there, it is really hard to go from nothing to something, you know, nowadays uh, because of that. Because A&R now and radio record labels are really just, you know, other than their contact with mainstream radio, they can't really do nothing for you that you can't do for yourself. They could probably help you pay for, like, a music video, but they're going to want that money back as soon as you sell some units, uh, you know. <laughs> 
They might, I mean, there's a lot of things they might be able to do for you, man, but it's not like it used, it used to be. You got signed with a record label. You could throw your hands up, go on there, let me know who's my assistant and how do we do this, you know? Oh, right. <laughs> now, man, you got to be a social media manager. Yeah, you got to do it all, brother. Yeah, don't forget, uh, Billy, back in the day, too, the record label's actually the bank. And a lot of and a lot of artists didn't realize that, and they ended up in situations because they were getting this these advances, true. and they'd go out and blow this these advances true. on mm-hmm. tennis shoes. And then when it got come time to recoup, the, the label we can start recouping the money. Then the artists have a problem because he forgot about all his tennis shoes he paid five hundred dollars a pair for. That is exactly true, brother. That they that that cannot be forgotten in this, and you know that ain't nothing free. And, you know, back in the day, they used to act like it was free until it wasn't, <laughs> you know. So, yeah, no, you're, you're right there, man. I, you know, it's, 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 um, like I said, I just take, I take mostly umbrage with the fact that when you're coming at, up as an artist, the time that you are allowed to just think about being an artist has gotten more difficult through the years, you know? I mean, you got to be a social media manager. Look, I'm lucky. I say lucky because I spent a lot of years doing this, but I'm lucky in that I can make my own music, you know. If not, I'd have to go buy beats off the Internet or some crap, you know. Like, and if I couldn't, if I didn't know which ones to buy, then I guess I'm just ass out of luck, you know. Um, but you got to be your own producer. You got to be your own social media manager. And if you're going to get booked somewhere, guess what? You got to pick up your own damn phone. And call the venue, and God help you if you tell them you're the artist. All of a sudden, you ain't shit. You ain't nothing. <laughs> you know? yeah, absolutely. Because you know yeah, they, call look at, they they looking at like if you're making these phone calls yourself, that's basically telling them that you haven't arrived yet. That's exactly true. And you call Bob's Lounge and nightclub up and say, "Hey, look here, man. Uh, my name is Billy Ray Rock." And I got a single that's doing really well, man. I got X number of followers on my social media. And uh, I would really love to come over and do a show for you guys. And i tell you what they'd say. The first thing they'd say is, Billy Ray who? Or Billy Ray Rock. I go, okay. So look here, man. Uh, send, let me give you an email address. Send your press packet. And if we're interested, we'll give you a call back. But if I oh, call that it, same it, club and said, I'm JJ Entertainment. And I represent international recording artist Billy Ray Rock, and he's coming through your area. And I want to know if you guys be included on a in a tour stop for him. And they're going to go, Billy Ray who? Billy Ray Rock. He's going to be coming through your area, and and he's got X Y Z followers. Now I know that that's not impressive, but I can tell you this. He's got the the number two song on iTunes, and he's got this song and that song and the other song. And he just finished opening up for Lenny Kravitz. And so you guys want to do this or not? And the next question I'm out is, what kind of money are you looking for? You know, so, and now you're doing the negotiating. And he doesn't want travel, does he? What else does he want? Does he want drinks? How many is in his band? And what night was this? Let me check and see if I got it available. I mean, it's 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 a different story when you're not the artist calling, man. You know, and um, so I mean, it's 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 just it's 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 hard, you know, but it's not impossible. You know, that's why I laugh at some of these guys that say when they say, "Hey, man, uh, you got to be honest." You got to do it the right way. You got to do it the honest way. Bullshit. You know, the time to be honest is when you get to the top of the mountain. Because now you ain't got no reason to lie. (laughs) (laughs) When you're trying to get to the top, and come on now. Come on now. (laughs) <laughs> they just have to understand this is the music business, and it's not the music play. And I tell all of us exactly right. like that all the time. This is the music business. It's not the music play. And you have to or decide that. why Why are you into this business. Are you in this business to make music for yourself, or are you trying to eat? There's a difference. 
That's exactly true. So, I mean, I try to look. When I talk to people, just I don't want people getting the wrong idea, man. When I, when I talk to people, well, first of all, I don't call anybody anymore. I got managers that does that. But, you know, when, when I did talk to people before I got manager and I would call and set up gigs, you know, I'd give them part of my name. So you got listeners out there that are doing music. They can take some notes. So my name is Billy Ray. They say, who am I speaking to? And I tell them, you're speaking to Ray, you know. Oh, you talking to you talking to B? <laughs> and then they say, "Well, who are you calling from?" And I invented a I make up a company. I'm calling for Bob BB Entertainment, and I represent Billy Ray Rock. This is B, and this is what's going on with him. And I talked to him, talked to him, talked to him. After I got a gig, you know, I I stuck an ad out there for a tour manager. I remember I had one ad up that said. The tour manager that it said, you want to get laid? And then underneath it would say, become a tour manager. Email me for details. So they shoot me an email. <laughs> and they say, yeah, man, what's this? I want to get laid stuff. They go, I'm looking for a tour manager. And if you could do this, man, there's plenty of women out there. <laughs> wow, that's something. <laughs> hey, well, listen, Adam, this is up, ready to go. <laughs> we gonna play some of your music, Billy. If I listen, because they probably saying, "What are these guys talking about? We ain't heard no music yet." <laughs> but everybody, look, if you just joined us, we chatting it up with Billy Ray Rock right here on I Am Indie. If you'd like to join the conversation, ask Billy Ray a question or whatever, what not, just press number one on your phone and let us know that that's what you want to do. Other than that, sit back and put your ears on some of this. Billy, we got a few songs. Uh, what you want to put on the first? Time, keep on, don't be afraid, dance with me. Uh, sunglass at the night. We're going to leave, uh, get the funk for the last one, if that's all right with you. Okay. Let, let, let's do time, keep on, man, since I was just talking about that. All right, everybody. This is Billy Ray with Time, Keep On. Let the windows down, turn the air conditioner up, and put your ears on this.
Okay, your girl Miss Drama Ganza, mm-hmm, check. Lip gloss, check. Mascara, check. I am Indy with the homie K Biddy, check, check. You listening to Blog Talk Radio, baby, and I love you for it. Mwah. Yeah, we back in the building with our guest today, Billy Ray Rock. Question yes, for you, Billy. Uh, your, your, your writing, when you do your songs, are you writing from uh, some scenario, experience, something where you went through, um, um, or you just hear a melody and then you start writing that way? I tend to be a mood writer, man. I I, I, uh, I follow a lot of what Michael Jackson uh, said uh, in an interview years ago. He said that you got to let the song write itself. And so what I do, man, is I write typically for the mood that a man for. Is that what I did? Time keep on. I was in a real somber kind of reflectionary kind of a mood, and uh, and uh, and then just started, you know, uh, writing from there. But but uh, so yeah, it's one of those kind of things for me, man. You know. Yeah. Well, I guess it. I guess. I guess that's actually what ends up resonating with the listeners when you do uh, write from uh, the mood or the feeling, you know, because somebody else somewhere having a, a similar feeling, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I figured it, if I feel a certain way, there's other people out there probably feel the same way, you know. But, I mean, I, when I write songs, the worst thing you could do as a songwriter Honestly, I believe it's worry about how many people are going to identify with it and try to understand that no matter what it is that you're writing about, there's somebody out there that's just like you, you know. Like I often hear people say, for example, my family is crazy, you know, we should have our own reality show. Um, and what I always try to say to people is that as crazy as you think your family is, there's other families out there just like them. And they're not any more or less entertaining than you are. You think you're special, you're not. Everybody's a lot of people out there just like you, you know. And I feel that way when it comes to writing songs. No matter what song I write, there's people out there that's going through the same things and having the same thoughts that I'm thinking. Like, I listen to some of those old Phil Collins songs, like specifically the one, uh, That's All, you know. And, man, I, I feel like he was following me around when he wrote that song, you know. And, you know. And and there's many other songs like that. Hello, Lionel Richie is another classic that, you know, I, I was like, man, I, I, I've, I've been there with the girl. Like, I, I can go on and on and on with these different songs. So when I write songs, I think to myself, for well, somebody is out there going, man, this guy is really capture what I'm thinking right now, you know? Yes, that is so, so true. People definitely have their favorite songs, too, that uh, take them back to a point in time in their life when they was going through whatever experience they may be going through at that time. And Absolutely. That's that's their song. So what's about, what about Dance With Me, Billy? Well, I did Dance With Me, man. I just did a couple other rock songs, and... I was really wanting to just do like an easy going kind of a dance groove song. And um so I put the groove together. But then after I did it, a lot of my songs, the titles are kind of an homage to the eighties. Uh for example, Dance With Me is the title song or the title of a song for one of my, you know, musical heroes, Rick James. And he uh, off, he had an album called Throwing Down, and Dance With Me was a song off of there. Um, and Dance With Me don't sound nothing like Rick James, but I got the title from it. And since I thought, I figured, well, I'm going to go on into the 80s, uh, let me do a couple of, you know, references. And, of course, I threw the Red Red Wine part at the end is uh, from the 80s group and, it was just kind of a you know kind of a throwback, just kind of a groove. I love doing it, man. I, you know, I, I uh, the video was a lot of fun to do. I think the video won an award of some sort. I, uh, I have a hard time keeping track sometimes because I get so many. Yeah, the video to dance with me um, won an award, and so I, you know I try to you know do stuff. I try not to be too obvious with these songs that I do, and certainly with dance with me was one of them songs that after I did it, 
I thought to myself, you know, I did. I thought to myself, you know, uh, you know, I don't know if people are going to like this or hate it. And as it turns out, I'm fond of it. So it worked out. Okay, well, we're going to let them put their ears on this one. Everybody, this is Billy Ray with uh, Dance With Me. And you know the drill. Let the windows down, turn the air conditioner up, and put your ears on this. This is Mr. Billy Ray, rock with Dance With Me. What's up? Billy Ray, what's your deal? Back news. 
Bad news. Yeah. Yeah, Bad news. Yeah, I wanted, wanted you to get the talent album out there so they can definitely go out. Well, and absolutely, man. No, it's called Bad News. And I made the Bad News, the album, man, because I felt like, you know, when I was trying to get up, get some attention, get some people to pay attention to what I was doing, I felt like everywhere I looked, it was bad news, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, constant reject letters. You know, some of these management companies act like they ain't got time for me. You know, oh, I'm sorry, we're not taking on any clients. Oh, I'm sorry, we just, uh, uh, you're not really what we're looking for to add to our roster, you know. Everybody had some kind of a, some kind of something that they want to say, you know. But, uh, yeah. You know, you know, I had mentioned so I once. I had mentioned, I had mentioned once on one of my last shows not too long ago that I find out the problem is a lot of these people that are de- uh, decision makers and and those type places don't really come from music, man. They come from business, so they were grandfathered into the company, but they're not musicians. They're not singers. Uh, they actually really know very much, very little, should I say, about the music. That's very true, man. And you know what I what I don't like about that, you having said that, is that, you know, back in the day, people would actually believe in somebody, you know? And whatever happened. Yeah. You, know, you get people out there now that don't got a background in music, much like what you just said, and they're just numbers people. Exactly. And they don't, they don't believe in people the way people used to. Nowadays, I, I one guy tell me, he said, I want you to get back to me when you've gone platinum and we might be able to talk. And I thought, you know, when I've gone platinum, what? Yeah, if I go platinum, I won't need to talk to you. So, I mean, it's just, it's amazing to me. You know, everybody wants, you know, that old story? Nobody wants to go to get the ingredients, but everybody wants to eat the bread, you know? Right. So, I mean, well, that's, you know. Well, this this business, I can tell everybody and every artist out there, listen, this business is not really meant for everybody. You know, you definitely got to know what you're doing, why you're doing, and keep your head to the sky because everybody's not going to like what you're doing, oh. and and everybody's not going to dislike what you're doing. That's very true, man. And, you know, you just got to enjoy doing it. I, I love what I do, man. I love making music. Like, we, my next single is going to be our, I'm bringing back – uh, bring rock back, um, and I'm in the middle right now doing a remix where I'm going to throw a, just a kick-ass rock guitar solo on it, and you know just do some things to it, man. I, I just enjoy doing it, man. I just did a video, uh, the final draft to the full-length video of that song. I got another song called uh, "Walk You Walk the Walk" uh, that, I, that that's going to be dropping. Uh, it's, I just, you know, I love doing what I'm doing. I, it's being, ha- look, I feel like this, man. People get into music for two reasons, one or two reasons. They either get in it for the money or loving the game, love of the game. That's it. Now, I want to pick cotton. Exactly. Which <laughs> can be a combination of both. You know what I mean? I mean, yes, sir. you could, you, you look, if you love the, you, like, when a guy tries to get up in the music, is music a love of the game? I'm sorry. I say a music love of the game. It's either love of the game or money, okay? Those are your two reasons, okay? Now, I'm in this for the love of the game. Now, ain't nobody like doing it for free, so I guess you could say money, too. But when you get into it, you get in it for both. But once you get to, well, you got millions of dollars, now you're not in it for the money anymore. Now you're in it because of the love of the game. You know, and the love of the game, what I mean by that, autographs, for some people that means girls, other people it just means attention, it means prestige, it means when you're out the mall, everybody gather around, you want to do selfies, that kind of thing. So everybody has their own definition of love of the game, but money is what it is. And so I feel like when I do this, man, I do it because the love of the game. If you're a musician and you do this, it's because you love doing it. You don't want to do it for free, obviously. But the reason why you do it, what drives you is the fact you love creating. You know what I mean? So that's how I feel about it, you know? I love the fact that knowing when my life is over, I did something more than stepping on ants every day. 
Absolutely. No question about it, brother. Yeah, if they can play my music a hundred years, thousand years after I'm gone and know that my life did something. No, yes, sir. Or shoot Listen, we're going to try to sneak some more of your music in here, Billy. You know, the client, the time is always flying when you're having fun with somebody, man. And I want to get the rest of these songs in here. Um, let me see. Sunglasses at night. And then we're going to hit well, sunglasses, the phone. Well, sunglasses at night, let me tell you what I love about that song. I was able to accomplish a few things on this song that very few people have been able to do. And I'll tell you what they are. I was able to accomplish putting together putting together a dance song, okay, with R and B vocals. Okay. But also I got some, if you understand trap music, I got some trap beats in it. And then on top of all of that, I was able to infuse some truly old school references. And on top of all of that, I was able to talk on the song. It was really difficult to talk on a song now until I have it work. Nobody really does that anymore where you're actually talking. I think the last song that anybody could that I've seen somebody talk on successfully is there's an old uh, Parliament song. Make my punk funk a pee punk. I want to get funked up. Um, where George Clinton, I think it is, is doing a bunch of talking. It's incredibly difficult to talk on a song and keep people's attention, and not so much just on any song, on a dance song. When you're not rapping, you're just talking. You're not screaming. So the, the the fact that I was able to pull all those off in three and a half minutes, for me, was an accomplishment. I'm extremely proud of that song. And, you know, you, you can play this at any college or anywhere. If you're not dancing, something's wrong with you. <laughs> yeah, we got some, we definitely got some references. You mentioned Parliament Funkadelic and George Clinton. We got a new record coming out of one of his guys, like Gene Poo Poo Man, that was with George for 28 years. We got oh, a new record wow. okay. coming out on him at the end of the week. But, uh, yeah, those Ooh. are my friends. So you definitely got oh, nice. some good references there. Nice, but, everybody, nice, this nice. is uh, Billy Billy Ray right here, Sunglass at Night, y'all. So put your ears on this one. Hmm. A lot of people here. I wish they would turn the lights down a little bit. That way with my sunglasses on, I can see real well. I wear my sunglasses at night. I can see in the dark with no light. Like a dog, I bark, but I bite. Come on and take this ride.